Good afternoon, welcome to Run Along Gaming. We're going to be doing another video. This will be on a smaller co-op game called The, Gr the Grizzled. This one's done by Cool Mini or Not. Uh, plays two to five players uh, in roughly about 30 minutes or so. And in this you're playing, uh, and I'm pretty sure it's based around World War I, basically the old uh, trench war fair that was going on at the time. And you'll pick one of these main characters here. Because you have like Gustave Bidal, uh, Lazare Bonticelli, Felix, and uh, you have Charles here, you have Gaston there. So each of these characters are going to have a little bit different of, a, of an ability. You're going to see what looks like a four leaf clover, which is considered to be their luck charm. And this one has a gas max, this one has a rain, this one has a bullet, snow, whistle the night time. And what they can do is they can use this ability in order to get rid of a card in the center. Uh, once they use that, they flip over the card, they no longer have the luck charm, but they can gain it back at another point. So we're going to probably just going to demonstrate three players, so I'll probably just give out these three cards to different people, and we'll kind of go over what they do in a little bit. Each player can get one of each of these tokens. There will be one that goes to the right, one goes to the left, and then there's one wild one that you just kind of randomly cho choose. And this will be support at the end of the round, and if you support different players, they'll be able to get little bonuses from doing so. We'll go ahead and give these to this player here. We'll give these to Felix. And we'll go ahead and take these ones out of the game for the rest of it. These are speech tokens. At the fourth phase of the round, as long as you have not been eliminated, you're going to get a speech token, whoever the current leader was. We'll say in the case of this one. If they make it to the fourth round, they're going to get one of these speech tokens. And it, what they can do is they can give a speech and it allows everybody to discard a card, depending on which card was chosen. So they're very powerful. Uh, as long as you're able to hit the cards that are in people's hands. And we'll go ahead and set these aside for now. Uh, these are where the different cards are going to go. You have like the tomb here, which is where most of the deck is going to end up going. And then you're going to have the piece here, which is what you have to clear. And once you clear this off, if no one has any cards in their hand, at that point you win the game. So this is pretty much like if this one gets cleared first then everybody loses but if this one gets cleared first and everyone loses their hand then you win. So this is kind of your win and lose condition here. These are some examples of, of cards that you could encounter. As you can see they have different characteristics on it. Uh, some of them will have symbols at the top like this is like the most powerful card out of them because it has every single condition. Like in this case, it has a whistle, a bullet, a mask, it has night, uh, sun, sorry, night, rain, and snow. Whereas this one just has a bullet at nighttime. This one has a mask and snow. This one has a mask and rain. This one has a mask, a whistle. So, these are the different conditions that could come up according to what ends up being played. Uh, there's also this little red symbol, which you'll notice, and the red symbol basically means the trap card. So if this were to get played, you would then draw the top card, and then put that into play as well. If it drops into another trap, you don't play the additional trap, you just play that single card. Which this would add another whistle and another snow to the situation. Now on top of that, we also have what they call hard knock. Uh, cards. The hard knock cards will give you a, a lightning bolt. Lightning bolts are damage. If you take four damage throughout the game, you'll lose. And then sometimes I'll have an ability, and sometimes there's an additional condition on it. So with this one, you may no longer communicate with the rest of the table at all. So muting you will make you not be able to speak anymore. Trauma, on the other hand, it will add a snow to the center. So if this ends up going to one of the players, from then on, there's another snow in the center of the board here. So 
having a couple of these in play, because let's say if this person here has a trauma, this person has another one that's for, I think it's like a paranoia. Uh, paranoia is like a whistle. Then it would add another whistle to the center, and then these can keep adding up really quickly, depending on the t different types of hard knocks that are out there. And at that point, you're going to go ahead and shuffle everything in. What we're going to do to set up the decks is you're going to take 25 cards out of the entire pile here. You're going to put them on this stack here. As I mentioned, if you clear all the cards on this stack here, by the end of the game, uh, the players will win, but they also have to clear everything in their hands. So if you draw too many cards, you could end up losing due to that as well. Which should leave 34 cards in this stack here. And that'll be the two different stacks we're going to deal with here. Once the card on the bottom is shown on either side, that could cause a win or lose situation depending on if all criteria are met. So we have uh, Felix here, uh, Lazare, and Gustav. We'll have our speech tokens here in the center. And then at this point, the leader will then choose uh, any number of cards uh, that they want to draw for each player. So they could choose like one card, and if he does that, each player will start with one card. Now, that might be very easy to succeed here with, but the problem is at the end of each round, for every card that's in each player's hand, you're going to take one of these cards and put it in this deck here. There's a minimum of three cards that will be put into this. So, if each person takes one card, that means at that point, you're not really taking enough out of this deck to actually make a difference. But let's say if I were to take out three cards each, so we knock out nine cards out of the 25, anything that's left over at the end of the round, we're going to be pulling that many more cards over. So, you do want to kind of do this in a decently quick time frame, but you also don't want to do so much so that you end up hurting your team with that. So you have to take a little bit into consideration as far as that goes. So at this point, this player here uh, is going to determine how many cards are going to draw. And they do have a pretty neat little player aid here. And it'll kind of go over the different steps as far as how the game plays. So this uh, first preparation phase here you're going to uh, deal the number of trial cards. The trial cards are these. You're always going to draw to these unless you're putting some of these over here at the end of the round. So you'll deal with your trial cards. This will be based on the number that this player here says. So they can say like one to five. So if he says five cards, each player is going to get five. But whatever they have at the end of the round is going to cost them. So unfortunately, you don't want to go too high with it, but you also don't want to go too low with it. But well, that's this first phase here. The second phase here uh, is the mission phase. You can do one of a couple different things. Either you can play a trial card, so you can play one of these cards from your hand, and as I mentioned, they're, they have different symbols on it, and they also have different times of day. So there might be like rain, there might be nighttime, there might be snow. But there's different times of day on it. Uh, and depending on which one is played, it's gonna go into the area here, which is no man's land. In No Man's Land, if there's ever three in the same condition, let's say there's three whistles. If there's three whistles, at that point, the mission ends, and then they fail the mission. As long as you continue pushing on, and you don't fail the mission, then you'll have different things occur by the end of the round. You can, instead of doing a trial card, you can use a good luck charm. So you could spend your good luck charm, let's say if I want to get rid of a whistle, he can flip himself over, and take a whistle out of no man's land. And that might be really beneficial if you think that the whistles are going to cause you guys to fail the mission. The next one is use a speech. Now how speeches work, at the after the fourth round you're going to gain one of these speeches as long as you guys are still in the game. So let's say if Lazare here gained a speech from last round. If he uses a speech, he can declare a particular type of thing. Let's say he says whistles. Everybody can then look at their hand, see if they have a whistle in their hand. If they do, they can discard it from their hand, which can be very beneficial, but unfortunately you can't really tell other players what you have in your hand. So he does kind of have to guess a little bit as far as what cards might be good or bad, depending on what they currently have there. 
And the last thing they can do is uh, withdraw and play a support tile. Now if they withdraw, they're going to pull away from the battle and no longer be contributing to the, the no man's land here. And then at that point they'll play one of these tiles. Let's say if I play this one. In this case it says to the right. So if he plays this tile, he's going to back out of the fight. He's going to put this tile in the center here, showing that he's going to support the person to his right, which is Felix in this case. Then let's say if this person withdraws because they played enough cards, and if they play any more cards, they'll lose. He's going to play this tile here. I'm not sure what it is, but we'll just go with it. This person here, they're going to randomly pick a tile. Let's go with this one. And he withdrew at some point. Why these tiles are going to matter is whoever has the majority, because let's say this one went left, this one went right, this one also went left. The majority goes to this person here. So this person is going to get mined, and these are going to go to this person here. Now because this player got the majority, they can do one of a couple things. They can either get their good luck charm back if they haven't already used it, or they can get rid of some of the trauma cards that come up. If you remember those cards that have uh, these lightning bolts, if you guys succeeded in the mission, then you can get rid of one of those. Uh, if, if, however, you guys failed your mission, you can only remove one of these. But if you succeed in your mission, you get rid of two of these cards. So these can be really powerful if you guys succeed, because then you can get rid of a lot more of these status effects. And the status effects can be very, very detrimental to the group on future missions, because they don't go away at the end of each round. They're going to continue with you, depending on which ones came up on it. So we're going to kind of go over a few rounds here. So we'll give this one back, we'll give this one back, we'll give that one back. Just to kind of give everyone a little bit better of a feel for how the game's going to run. Oh yeah, and uh, sorry, the last phase. So as I mentioned, the third phase is the support. If you succeed or fail, you're going to get rid of either status effects, uh, or you can reactivate your charm. So if you got rid of your good luck charm, that is a good way to get rid of that as well. The last thing is the... Uh, morale drop. At that point you're going to add these trial cards to this deck here. It's a minimum of three, however it adds equal to the number of players, uh, sorry, equal to the number of cards in players' hands. So let's say if this person has four cards left, this person has two cards left, and this one has one card left, you're going to add seven to this pile. So at that point you're kind of losing a little bit of ground if you aren't getting rid of all your cards. Uh, this will also be a good time to then change your leader, and then that's going to keep going around clockwise. And then lastly, you're going to give a speech to the person that was previously leader. So he's now got one of these speeches. And as I said, with the speech, you can name a particular uh, trait, and then at that point, with that trait, each player can then discard one of those cards. Alright, so we're just going to go over a round or two, just to kind of give everyone a feel for what this actually means. And normally this would not be open information, but what I'm going to do is use a little bit of open information here, which gives me a little bit of an advantage in the game. But generally, each player is going to be playing their own thing normally. But we're going to say that this player decided that we're going to start with three cards apiece. The leader will always draw first. Two and three. Then this person will draw three. then this person will draw three. Now, none of the players know it yet, but as you can see, there's going to be a lot of nighttime stuff. Now, no one actually knows this other than the fact that I'm actually showing everything. But at this point, we have No Man's Land. And starting with the team lead, he's going to be able to choose to do one of those four actions. He can either play a card, he can use his good luck charm, uh, or he can use a speech, which he has no speeches yet, because that only happens at the end of the fourth round. And in the first round, no one has a speech. Or they can uh, withdraw and then play one of their support cards here. So, at this point, 
uh, he'll be the first one. So let's say he's going to drop the Knight of Day. And he also has this card here, Tyrannical. And if he takes this one, he takes a mission leader role and, and then keeps it, preventing the distribution of speeches. So if he plays this card, it's going to have him have that particular uh, downside to it. So this person knows now there's a snow and then there's a nighttime. So if he plays any of these knights, it's going to get a lot closer to actually losing if they do that. So what he may end up doing is going with this one here. So this will add a bullet and a whistle. So right now they have one bullet, one whistle, one knight, one snow. So it's not a terrible situation yet. Now this player here can do one of a couple things. He can either give himself a phobia, which will then get put down a whistle, which could increase the chance of them losing. Or he can go with a knight and a bullet. If he plays his trap card, he is playing a little bit of a risky maneuver, because if the top card on the deck is either a knight time or a bullet, they're going to lose due to that. So what he may do is he may go ahead and drop this one. It's a little bit less risky in this particular scenario because this is going to drop that. Otherwise he could have dropped this uh, whistle here. Or he could have used his good luck charm and that might actually not be a bad idea either. We'll go ahead and say he dropped this first because he may just use that next round. In this case he has a couple different options here. He can either go tyrannical which will give himself a damage. He could drop a bullet, but he can't, because if he drops a bullet, they're going to lose the mission. Or he can use his good luck charm to get rid of a card here. And what he may actually do is go ahead and burn that good luck charm, because he knows he can't play that unless he gets rid of a bullet here. And because since this whistle is part of the same card, he's going to get rid of that card. And that gets removed. Now at this point we have this player here. He cannot play either of these, so he's kind of in the same boat. If he wants to try to stay in the round, he's going to probably have to get rid of this one. So he may just go ahead and use his good luck charm to also get rid of the snow, because that his good luck charm is to get rid of a snow ability. So he'll go ahead and use that. Now he has a couple things he can do here. He can either uses to get rid of something but at this point no one really has a good luck charm anymore so next round is going to be a little bit more rough or he can go and drop one of these cards which he may actually play because he's in the same bind again if he drops this card there's a good chance it'll trap and then if it put down, puts down a bullet or nighttime they will lose so he's going to drop a phobia this card sticks with him for a while until somehow he gets rid of it but that does add a whistle to this for here on. Now with this character here, he's probably going to go ahead and drop another one of those. So in this case now we have two bolts, a knight, and a rain. So he can drop either one of these without too much worry. So he'll just drop the mask. Because in this case it doesn't really matter too much to so. him. And on this particular situation, he really doesn't want to play this because if he does, they automatically lose due to bullets and nighttime. So he needs either burn his good luck charm, which we may just go ahead and do that, to get rid of this one. Goes to this player here, which we actually used his earlier, so we're going to flip him over. Now he's going to use Tyrannical. So he'll basically stay the leader from here on. Then lastly, this player. He could go ahead and play this if he wanted to. Which he will go ahead and do. Uh, this player now is going to bail. The reason is because if he plays this, there's a he's going to actually make them lose due to nighttime. At which point he's now going to put out one of these supports. Let's say he's going to drop that one. 
And at this point, he left the mission. So he'll have one card in his hand. This player here has no cards in hand, so he's going to go ahead and bail out of the mission. So we're going to drop that one on him. This person's then going to drop out of the mission as well because he has no cards in hand. Now, once everybody's been withdrawn, at that point you can reveal all your supports. This one went left, this one went right, but this one also went right. So they're going to switch. And there. So this person has the majority. They did succeed because they did not actually lose the mission on this one. These are all going to go away. And then at that point, the majority is going to do one of two things. He either gets his good luck charm back, or he can remove up to two statuses uh, from himself. So, as you can see, he's not really doing too well as far as statuses go, because if he takes a lot more damage, it could get him killed. Or he could get his good luck charm. But we burned three good luck charms just to make that one kind of work. So, it's kind of one of those little downsides of the round here. But let's say he's going to go ahead and just get, take his good luck charm back. We'll just go with that. A leadership would normally pass. Actually, let's not give him his good luck charm. We're going to give her a tyrannical. At that point, good luck. He does not have his good luck charm. These are going to go to him. This one will go to him. And then at this point, we're going to see how many cards are in each player's hand. This is the only one with cards left in their hand. So normally it would be one card, but the minimum is three. So you're going to take three cards from this deck here, and you're going to put it in this pile here. And then the play proceeds again. This person now can decide how many cards that they're going to want to put down in each player's hands. This person already has one, so that is something that he might have to factor in. But let's say he's going to go with like two. Two, and then two. And this is a pretty bad card that could come up uh, pretty soon as well. Now the thing is, no one really has any of their good luck charms left anymore. So it is going to be a little bit more difficult for them to get rid of things in the center. Oh, but they did get a speech off of this. Now I said no one actually knows what cards are in each player's hand. I leave it open right now mostly due to the fact it's a little easier for explanation purposes. So if he were to declare one of these cards, he's probably going to choose one of the symbols or one of the types of things. So he can either declare snow or bullets or rain or whistle. Now if he declared, like say, bullets, then three cards could get discarded here, which would be really beneficial. But let's say if he said whistles, you're only going to get two of these. If he said rain, he's going to get three. If he said snow, he's going to only get three as well. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways about playing it, but since you don't have a lot of knowledge of what's in each player's hand, normally it won't be very beneficial as far as that goes, and it's hard to really determine which card you want to use the speeches on. But this is going to just be rinse and repeat over and over and over. And as I mentioned, there's automatically one whistle in play now, due to the, the hard knock card that's here. And the only way to get rid of these cards are to get support from other players. So sometimes people may talk with each other to figure out who's going to get support this round. And as long as one player gets majority, that player is going to be able to get rid of stuff. You know, some of these phobias, that, well, not phobias, but the uh, hard knock cards that they have. Because each of these are a little bit different and can sometimes be, you know, different issues that come up. Like Fragile here, other players cannot withdraw as long as they have cards in, any cards in hand. So as long as I have this out, none of the other players are going to withdraw uh, as long as they have some sort of cards in their hand. So they're going to keep pushing a little bit harder because your character's fragile. Uh, this one's prideful. You may withdraw only if your hand is empty or if you are the last uh, still on the mission. So if I have prideful out, this may force me to keep playing until either I lose or until uh, or until I'm out of, uh, or I'm the last one on the mission itself. So, 
there are different little situations that could cause as well. And there are a lot of these cards, and as I said, if you get four of these lightning bolts, you are eliminated, so... And then the entire game is over if one player gets eliminated. So you kind of have to play around a little bit with that, and you have to kind of watch how much damage you've taken, as well as kind of watching what's in the center of the board. Because if the center of the board gets too bad, then you could lose due to that as well. Uh, as I said, once this pile here is clear, so once you get to that last card, and if no one has any cards in their hand, you'll win the game. But as I said, alternatively, if this card ever gets revealed because this pile goes away, then you lose the game. So it is a little bit of a time constraint, because you have to kind of do it a little bit quicker. So if you take too few cards in this, you're not going to get rid of it quick enough. But if you take too many, it's going to make this pile move over here a lot quicker as well. Because let's say if we had five cards in each player's hand right now, 15 cards could move over, which is a huge section of the deck. So let's say if we all took five cards and then we all went through, that could be really devastating really quickly. So, but yeah, that is the game of the Grizzle. Uh, said it's by a cool mini or not, and it plays fairly quickly. It's like 30 minutes or so, so it is a very uh, quick casual game, but it is a little bit more brutal as far as co-op games go. Uh, so I do hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, watch next week. We should have another video uh, coming out as well. And we'll go over another how to play video of another game. Otherwise, uh, thank you for watching Ronald Gaming. You have a good day.